Good morning and welcome once again to Digital Look TV. With us again, and we're very grateful for it, is Bill Hubert. He's Chief Economist at Markets.com. Bill, thank you very much for joining oh, us. Thank you for, you know, it's been too long and we got, to make, we got to make these interruptions much shorter and be here on a more regular basis. We would certainly like that. So would I. Okay, um, this has been a very big week as far as economic data, yes. central bank meetings. There's quite a lot of risks, risks out there in the market, yes. yet markets seem to be a little bit on sedatives. So let's run through all the different central banks and see what we can expect from each of those, where the risks mm -hmm. might lie. ECB, there are expectations for lowering the main policy rates, perhaps even some sorts of asset purchases, mm -hmm. four-year four LTROs you were explaining yeah. to me. But this is all more or less baked in the cake. Yes. I mean, the presidents are there. They're wrapped. Mm -hmm. And as you said, I'm expecting both now the refinancing and the, and the uh, deposit rate now minus 15. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'd have a negative deposit rate. And also, right. I think, probably a four-year LTRO. That is what, to me, the market is expecting in our presence. Mm -hmm. As we discussed earlier, my feeling is, my feeling's been this way for more years than I want to remember, we have to see the, the ECB getting aggressive is maybe the wrong word, more assertive. Because okay. if they were concerned about the euro at 133 plus in October, mm -hmm. when they drop rates in November, hmm. well, we're now 136. I know it's boring. We're 136.85 to 136.50, okay? And I mean, I just checked now, we're, we're 136.10. Mm -hmm. So as you just said, excuse me, has the market now priced the fourth, the three things that I just mentioned, hmm. and the risk is the euro could be, if you're short, we could see, if nothing else, 136, 25, 35, 45. And as we saw earlier this week, you know, when we got uh, the inflation number coming mm -hmm. in at 0.5, mm -hmm. we actually saw a bit of a, you know, a, a, a move down to 135.85. Right. But then as we were talking about, wait a minute, I, I, I don't think there were any more sellers out there. So some, mm -hmm. some people then decide, well, you know, I, I, maybe I'm short from 137, so let's cover some shorts here. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the CFTC data, euro positions were incredibly short. Okay, so in the very short term, it seems like every, everything is baked in the cake. It does. But looking at, say, two years forward, deflation. Yes. It advances at a snail's pace. Yes. It carries a lot of significant risks yes, with it. Yes, it does. So even if markets now might more or less remain calm, at some point, either the ECB acts and that yes. provokes a reaction, or the ECB does not act sufficiently yes. and that provokes a reaction? Yes, that's my feeling, okay? My feeling is still year end, 132, hmm. 133 level, okay? okay? Because, as I say, if the euro and central bank was concerned about exports, if you will, okay, mm. at 133 the figure. I mean, I've, I've been to Slovakia. I've been, I've been to the Ukraine before it all went horribly wrong, excuse mm -hmm. me, last year. Mm -hmm. I've been to the Czech Republic. Mm. And they can't sell anything, okay? Mm. And I think you've got five of the current, what, 18 members of the European Union, you know, in, in deflation, okay? Mm -hmm. And I mean, this is, you know, in my generation, it was like, we had to look up what deflation was. I mean, you know, we, we were just pleased if inflation got down to a single digit. Right. Okay. Uh, so basically, the ECB needs to act. Yes. The Bank of England, again, it seems that right now there is a debate between, <clears throat> or rather, until recently, people had been speculating on an earlier increase yes. in the bank rate. However, latest data, uh, house price surveys, seem to show that house price house prices in the UK are starting to come up yes. a little bit off the boil. You have the mortgage market review. Yeah. The FPC might tighten regulations on banks. Mm. Some banks have announced tightening of well, their you've own got two, You've got material. Lloyds and RBC, I think, joined them, you know, at 500,000 mm -hmm. four-time salary. Again, to try to do an internal cooling system. Mm -hmm. But the key is going to be, as you just said, Yes, I know Carney, what, what did he take over last July, I think, yeah. you know, from almost day one, everybody says, we hear what he's saying, but we don't believe him, okay? Mm -hmm. hence, hence, Sterling went 166, 167. We got close to very, clo very close to 170. So mm -hmm. the market says, yeah, okay, Mark, you know, it's one of these things. Huh? What do you say, Mark? Huh? And, and, and so now, now it's a, oops, hold oh, on. We lost. Oh, all right. So, we'll find out. Oh, there we you go. know, the, the, the key is that, and we saw this with Wheel in last week's FT saying, mm -hmm. you know, I expect a 9 nil vote today for mm -hmm. rates unchanged and for quantitative easing. But the minutes in two weeks are going to be very interesting to see was, well, Mark, you know, not so sure. My feeling is, my official stance is February of next year, 
uh, when the data started getting much better, inflation mm -hmm. started gradually going up, we're still at a very low level, below the 2% mm -hmm. level, uh, we started seeing for the first time almost wages trying to com compete mm -hmm. with the inflation level. But the key right. then, then all of a sudden growth. So then I said, well, maybe we see a move in December. Well, mm -hmm. I remember. I'm now feeling, you know, 30% probability we could see November. November, yes. before the elections. Yes. Okay. Well, I, I think it would be before the elections anyway. My, my official mm -hmm. call is like February, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because if he's going to do something, like any central bank, they have to be, quote, apolitical, okay? Indeed. Supposedly. And so you're going to, you know, either February or after the May, what is it, May 15th? I don't know when the date is in May. May 15th, okay, so, th th you know, it'll be after that. Okay. Even so, however, again, also we see UK capital markets mm. seem to be a little bit on sedatives. Yes. Sterling. It's been range bound. Yes. At some point, if Carney does bring forward the increase in bank rate, if at some point the ECB has to act more or does not, will we see a breakout? Of yes, this range? but in euro sterling. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 when it's, it's through 81 now. Then we can see it 80 to 79, 78. That's where the play will be more in okay. euro sterling rather mm -hmm. than euro dollar or sterling dollar, okay? okay. Because that's going to be the key here, okay? For the simple fact is, I don't know what the percentage is, but hmm. the, a, a massive percentage of our exports go to the European Union, okay? All right. Good point. Uh, sterling versus dollar. US dollar, the US Federal Reserve. Tomorrow we have the non farm payrolls mm -hmm. data coming out. For the Fed, Again, it seems the market is quite tranquil. Mm. Everything's baked in the cake. Again. Very much so. And I mean, as we saw in the beige book last night, okay? Mm. I mean, I think uh, half were showing moderate growth. Uh, the other half were showing modest growth. But mm. they're still basically, whether you want to call it the repercussions mm. of the cold winter, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, my call, and this was before yesterday's ADP data, was still, I'd increased it from plus 200 at probably 225. I okay. think the Bloomberg consensus is 215 with the rate staying at six and a half. Why did you do this? Well, I, 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 I guess I got confused. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I was looking at, at, at the first ISM, not okay. the second ISM, right. not the third mm -hmm. ISM, you know, third time lucky. And so yeah. again, you know, I may have to go back to the Bloomberg consensus that still is plus 215. But remember, we've been averaging, I think, over the last six, seven months, plus 200. So okay. it shows we're seeing an, an improving economy, but nothing that's going to overheat. And I mean, even the simple fact is, last week, okay, the Treasury 10-year traded at 2.40. I mean, I know it's now up to 257. And I know we have that, that lovely guy back in May of last year. You know, I'm not going to mention any names, but he's that, you know, guy on the West Coast of California. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, three and a quarter, three and a half for the 10-year. Okay, well. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, all I can tell you is that uh, one of the major players here, when he made that statement a year ago, was on Bloomberg Television, and he said, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll buy everything you got. And as I say, what do we, we move from 257? So, you know, the, the bond market is not saying anything. And, 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 and so you see him, you know, you still saw buying in treasuries, okay, mm -hmm. when he got down to 240. At the, in the same week where we had records for both the Dow and the S&P, okay? Indeed, exactly. So, you know, you'd think there'd be some kind of rotation. I mean, the rotation only seems to be within the Dow or the S&P, you know, mm -hmm. out of pharmaceuticals into such and such and such and such. You know, rather, you know, you're not seeing, well, you go from bonds into stocks, and then if we get concerned that we go into stocks into bonds. I mean, you're seeing buying in both mm -hmm. of those. But as, as you just said, it's also sedative time, okay? I mean, all you've got to do is look at mm -hmm. the earnings in the, both the first and second, and uh, for the second quarter, of the sure. major players, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, Goldman may have had a great five years ago selling bonds, but they haven't been sold back to them. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, it's buy and hold, buy and hold, thank you very much, okay. and, you know, w w with your dealer. And of course, you see this with the fixed index, the fixed index, multi year low, volatility, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, vo FX volatility. But that scares some people because you have stocks slowly grinding higher, sure. treasury yields falling. Exactly right. People well, that, usually say that's not supposed to happen. Yields. Okay. If, mm -hmm. if you look at economics 101, mm -hmm. you know, that is not supposed to happen. It's supposed to be the rotation, fixed income, such and such. But you see, it's also a, a question of, you know, a lot of these stocks, and we've seen this, especially in the UK in the last 10 years, mm -hmm. they're not paying dividends. I mean, look, look how much money Google, mm -hmm. uh, IT, Microsoft, they're sitting on trillions of dollars. Okay. Are they paying dividends? No. So, you know, what you have to do 
you know, it, it's... What might make that change? Because in the end, we want that change, don't we? we want people... of, of course, you see. And especially if you're an insurance company, a pension fund. Now, it may not be much, but if you, know, if you can get 2.5% guaranteed, okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then you've got to do that, okay? But for now, it's everything seems like the coast is clear. Exactly right. Okay, no risk factors. Okay, we'll see how long all of this lasts. Uh, Bill Hubert, Chief Economist, market, Markets.com. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you very much once again for your time, and we hope, to, we hope that you will join us again next week. Until then.